In today's video, we're going to talk about ChatGPT prompt and custom instructions. So prompt engineering, this is just a quote, is the process of crafting effective prompts to guide AI models, particularly generative models, in generating the desired outputs. A prompt is an input given to the AI model that sets the context, goal, or restraints for the model's responses. The quality of a prompt can significantly influence the quality, relevance, and accuracy of the AI-generated output. And this is why in this video, we're going to talk about prompt and custom instructions using ChatGPT. So the first thing that's important is you want to be specific and detailed. You want to clearly define what you're asking and include specific details or context if it's relevant to your question. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to be going through more of these guidelines as we continue this video. So the next thing you want to do is you want to use clear and direct language and avoid ambiguity in your phrasing. Make sure your question or your request is straightforward and easy to understand. You also want to include all the relevant information. So if your question builds on previous knowledge or is part of a larger context, you want to include that information in your prompt. And this helps the model understand the full scope of what you're asking. You also want to define the desired output format. If you have a preference of, uh, for what kind of information you want it to be presented as, like a list, a summary, or step-by-step -step instructions, you want to mention it in your prompt. You also want to keep it focused. Try to focus on one topic or question at a time. This helps in generating a more precise and accurate response. You also want to look at iterative approaches. So if the first response doesn't fully answer your question, you can ask a follow-up question for more detail or clarity. So this is two examples of prompts asking for the same thing. And later, we'll show you the difference in output when we have a very naive and very basic prompt and a very detailed prompt. And we'll see what kind of differences. So I'll run through this example after I finish this slideshow. So ChatGPT with custom instructions is what we're going to talk about next. And what this refers to is the ability to customize or provide specific instructions to the ChatGPT model for generating responses. And this means that users can guide the model to respond in a certain way, follow specific guidelines, or handle requests differently than the standard model behavior. So first is customization of responses. Users can request the model to adopt a certain tone, style, or format in its responses. For instance, you might ask for a response in a formal tone, as a bullet point list, or in a style of a specific genre. You also, uh, there's also this feature of guided conversations. So users can instruct the model to focus on specific topics and avoid certain subjects or handle a conversation in a very particular manner. Uh, this can be useful for specialized applications or to ensure that the conversation stays on track. You can also uh, give custom instructions that uh, relate to adherence to constraints. Users can set constraints or rules for the conversation, for example, avoiding sensitive topics, not generating certain types of content, or following specific ethical guidelines. You can also give task-specific instructions. So for tasks such as writing code, creating content, or assisting with learning, users can provide detailed instructions on what the model should accomplish. Two more, uh, the next is feedback-driven interaction. So users can give feedback on the instructions or, or the responses from the model, and the model can use this feedback to adjust its subsequent replies. And this can be particularly useful for iterative tasks like editing a document or refining a design. And finally, continuity and context management. Users can instruct the model to remember certain aspects of a conversation for continuity or to ignore previous parts of a conversation for a fresh start. Okay, so next, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show and bring back the two examples we looked at earlier and send it directly into ChatGPT. So the first prompt example we have is something that's very, very simple and something that is not uh, that good, in my opinion, because it doesn't give any context or it doesn't give any specific details. And when you enter that, uh, please write test cases for login. That's the prompt we have. And this is sort of the output you expect. It doesn't know exactly what you want, so it's just going to give you a bunch of different information so that you can work with that instead.
and you see this is what we get uh, we get a bunch of different uh, different things here and it keeps running and we see that the response that you get from chat GPT from that prompt is very very exhaustive there's a lot of information almost overwhelming you and it's just has a lack of focus and it's not very useful so instead what you can do instead is you can use this prompt instead and so uh, instead of running just uh, instead of saying just please write a test case I've given it specific instructions on what kind of test case what kind of output I want what kind of input it takes and uh, what kind of things we want to test for as well and when I do this instead give it some time to load we see it's very very specific output and it's um, it's similar in what we had earlier but it has much greater focus and we see that it gives us all these different test IDs and, and things that we can test for. And yeah, and it gives us our output in the format of a table. Uh, this BI, by, uh, for, uh, for your uh, reference, means starting a new line in HTML. So this is what we have. And that's just two differences uh, in the outputs that we get when we just slightly modify the prompt we use. Next, I'm going to show you how you can specify custom instructions in ChatGPT so that you can customize how ChatGPT responds to you and the context you want to give to ChatGPT. So what you do is you go to your name here, you click, right click it, uh, you click it, and then you go to custom instructions. And under custom instructions, you have the first block of text where you specify what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses. And that's the context. And then the second part is, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And this is basically the format of the output. And by putting some description into these two uh, blocks of text, you can basically customize uh, your ChatGPT input and outputs. And so for us, what we have here under, uh, under the context is, we have adherence to QA terminology. So please use standard QA terminology. So we ask the ChatGPT to use proper language uh, and jargon in the QA terminology field. And we also ask it to provide uh, clear and unambiguous answers and avoid using technical jargon unless necessary so that the answer is uh, understandable by the general public. Next, we also ask it for um, uh, reference relevant software testing standards and best practices. And the responses we also say when applicable include examples of test cases or testing scenarios that are relevant to the topic being uh, discussed we also specify uh, under test data set include five data set for each field so that we have five different data set examples for each field and if a question involves identifying issues or errors in a given scenario please clearly illuminate uh, enumerate each issue and explain why it is a problem uh, finally, we also have some more uh, some more specifications down here. We say, when asked about testing or planning strategy, provide a structured approach, including considerations for test coverage, risk assessment, and resource allocation. The next is geolocation. If asked to provide city with geolocation, use Chrome Developer Tool Sensor to find the city with latitude and longitude. Uh, and also, if the query involves QA tools or technologies, Mention both widely used options and any emerging tools that are gaining traction in the industry. And finally, we also said uh, for questions about compliance, focus on how QA processes ensure adherence to relevant laws, regulations, and guidelines. So this is the context we gave these custom instructions. Next, we talked about uh, how we want the output. So first, we said, please provide responses in clear, structured manner uh, with important uh, points summarized at the beginning. We also said, we want it to maintain a professional tone uh, with a uh, balance between friendliness and formality. Also, we said that uh, for test plans, please provide items in test table rows and columns of content 
introduction, and steps. So these are the three columns that we want in our tables. Also, we said for test cases, please provide content in the tables. And test data sets, please provide data set in numbered lists. So we want them numbered one to five, and only five data sets are enough. And also geolocation, export information in table with columns of city and then longitude and longitude. So we also export the city information by doing this. And so with that, we also enabled enable for new chats. And now for any new chats we have, it will take in those context clues and it will also take in those output, uh, output specifications. And so with that, what we can basically do is we can, um, so I'm gonna give it some prompts. So the first prompt I'm gonna give it is I'm gonna tell ChatGPT to please provide a test plan for web application. Press enter. And we'll give it some time. And now it's basically testing. Uh, it's basically outputting all these different uh, test plans for the web application. And so this is our first one. And if we take a look through, um, it basically refers to, uh, it uses some QA terminology uh, below. For example, um, below, uh, uh, for example, test cases, test scripts, test reports, defect logs, and so on. And it basically gives us our output in the way that we want it. The next thing I can ask it is, please provide a test data set for email input. So I'll go ahead and enter that. Go down here so I can see it. And now we see for the data set, like we specified in the custom instructions, we wanted it in a numbered list. And now it's giving us a numbered list and only gave us five examples because we said five examples is enough. And so this is what we see. And the next thing we want is please provide 10 cities in Canada for geolocation. Go ahead and uh, specify that. And we see that it gives us this kind of table, city, latitude, longitude. And this is what we specified the output as. We want it as three columns, city, latitude, and longitude. Um, referring back to the first one, uh, we can look at this again. So test plan for web application. We have it in this sort of format, but remember that um, in our custom instructions, we actually wanted it to output in a table. So for example, right here, it says we, we specified we want the test plan to be in table rows, columns with content introduction and steps. So it actually did not give us what we wanted. So we're gonna go ahead and do this again. And this time we're going to, um, we're gonna modify the prompt slightly. So I'm gonna basically paste the prompt that we had from earlier. And so this is our prompt from earlier. And this time we're gonna say, please provide a test plan for web application. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this. And so by putting quotation marks around this, um, ChatGPT knows we directly referred to what was in the custom instructions. And this time it gives us our output using the three different columns in the tables. So sometimes you might run into these sort of issues with ChatGPT and you just might have to play around with the prompt to get the output that you want. And we, now we see that we have the different test plans in a table with three different columns, content, introduction, and steps. And yeah, so this is basically uh, how you can use custom instructions in ChatGPT to create better prompts for ChatGPT so that your outputs are what you want. And with custom instructions, the, the advantage of it is that you don't have to specify the context each time you ask a question. And so it's very advantageous when you want it to be very technical within a field of your interest, uh, but you wanna ask a bunch of questions and you don't wanna be repetitive with the prompts. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful uh, for you to learn a little bit about custom uh, instructions in ChatGPT. If you found the video helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you next time.